on the time, the touch of a woman's hand has sent Valsella down the way. Half a world away in Indonesia, men's muscles have made tibia fast to her birth. Just two ships in a fleet of hundreds. The pipelines will fill them up with anything from gasoline to bitumen, oil in one form or another. For these ships are tankers. And these days they're everywhere. Here's Godilla flying the flag of Holland, probing the dawn mists of the Mersey bringing oil from South America. Or Varina flying the Red Duster, moving into Mina El Amadi in the Persian Gulf, then through the blaze of Suez and Port Said, past the gateposts of the Mediterranean, Malta and Gibraltar, butting the Atlantic swell with her cargo of Kuwait crude. You find the tankers steering for the heart of the United States, up the Mississippi to New Orleans and Baton Rouge. You see them in the wide bends of the Hooghly, moored at Singapore and Tarakan, loading beneath the tall towers of Cardon, Venezuela. Nowadays, one-fifth of all the merchant ships afloat are tankers. They're a new branch of the traffic and profession of the sea. You can always tell a tanker she has her funnel and engines at the stern. And she's never in port for long. She can't be. This world runs on oil, and the tanker's business is to keep it running. Look down from the North Pole and see how the oil moves round the circle of the globe. From the fields to the refineries, where the black crude is manufactured into products, the tankers form the floating chain between. Then there's a second chain, tankers again, carrying the products from the refineries out to the consumers. And all the time the consumers are sending in fresh demands, across the globe to the hub of the whole system, to the centre that controls the operation of the fleet. In our case, we work from London. Of the 2,000 odd tankers in the world, we operate about 450. 200 of these are our own, Dutch, British, French. The rest we charter by time or voyage, as and when we need them. In this office, the oil you want is fitted into the worldwide pattern of transportation. Here, the tankers are routed, out of Arctic waters maybe into a coral lagoon, or sent from Borneo to India, or Norway, or South America. It looks humdrum enough, filling in forms, allotting tanks, but somehow, through it all, you can smell salt water. This ship might be Linga, or Navicella, or Patella, or Helix. In fact, she's Liparos, and I'm chief officer in her. 9,000 tons of fuel oil and bitumen, that's our cargo, and we're bound from Curaçao in the West Indies to Fall River, Massachusetts, USA. We call it the Dollar Run. We carry a complement of 46, 29 men, 14 officers, three apprentices, and one cat. <laughs> at least it's one at the moment. Come into the saloon. At the head of the table, the master, Captain Sear. Forty years he's been at sea. Mrs. Sear is with him. Next, the chief engineer and his wife. It's her first voyage. Trotter, the second engineer, he sees ghosts. Then Sparks, with the news of the world at his ear. Then me on the left, with the second officer. Ex-Navy, but not a bad type. On the bridge, Paddy, the third officer. Comes from Ballyhooley, I think. Or is it Ballyluby? And on watch in the engine room, the third engineer. Yep, auxiliary's okay. Main motor temperature's normal, bearings running sweet. She won't fall apart this side of home. Home? In my day, they'd have tired a man for talking of home on the outward voyage. But things have changed. Nothing but paper now, forms and figures. I sometimes wonder whether I'm a master mariner or a, an electronic brain. 
I made my first trip just 40 years ago. I was a pretty cocky apprentice then, like they all are. Until one day the Lee scuppers came up and hit me in the face. That taught me that the sea holds no respect for man or ship. watch the wind. Now we watch the engines doing it all for us. I often wonder what the old hands would have thought of all this modern chromium of ours. The men that fought the yards with the clouds cutting overhead and the sea snarling at them from below. Mind you, I've no regrets. Life at sea is better now, a great deal better. And why not? Seize your business, it might as well be as much like home as you can make it. Especially when you can take your wife along. Oh, there's no end to it. Games and books do. Pass the time off watch. Yes, and culture too. <laughs> Especially on the dollar. Do you suffer from corns or bunions? Is it a misery to walk? An agony to dance? Why not give your feet a real treat? All right, don't get personal. Corns or not, it's my watch again, and number two is waiting to be relieved. It's true what the old man said. Life at seas changed even in my time. And tankers are a good berth. But even we have our ups and downs. The war was one of them. Have you ever felt a ship actually sinking beneath you? Have you ever been towed away behind a U-boat to heaven knows where? You laugh about it now but you didn't at the time. They turned some of us into Mac ships too, merchant aircraft carriers, with a flight deck over the tanks and a complement of planes to keep an eye out for the wolf packs. In our business, you're in the thick of it in any war whether you're in the Western Approaches or the Indian Ocean, or off the coast of Korea, your friends are shouting for you because you've got the stuff they need to fight with. But it's a far cry from war to Fall River, Massachusetts. And that's where we are now, coming in to tie up and discharge our cargo. There's Charlie, the pumpman. This is his big moment. Down, down, down he goes, down to his beloved pumps. He's got 3,000 tons of fuel oil to discharge and 6,000 tons of bitumen. Through the pumps, through the hoses, into the tanks ashore. And when he's finished, it'll be cast off, full ahead, and back for more. That's it, back for more. Back to Curacao for another load. We're running light now, and if there was anything of a sea, we'd be bouncing like a cock. But the weather's a blooming marvel. Not much to write about this time. Never is when the weather's good. Even the bosun's happy. He whistled a tune the other day. The old so-and-so. He's had the whole crowd sweating their heads off washing and painting all over the ship. 
We started on the poop last Tuesday and moved forward till we were working right up in the eyes of the ship. Chippy the carpenter is busy with his windlass and pumps is tinkering with the valves in his cargo lines. Even the engineers are working. There's energy for you. By the way, how's Gwen getting on at home? Still painting the town red? A tanker's like a girl, you know, always demanding attention, especially the tanks. Every ballast trip, you have to get them ready for the next load. That's the chief officer's business. He has a look-see and decides what's to be done. And then the blokes go down and get on with it. It's a mucky job cleaning tanks, and no one's sorry when it's done and the lids go down again. When I get my next leave, I'm going to cut down that dead tree outside the house. I thought of that yesterday when we were greasing down the standing rigging. That's a nice job for a fine day. We shackle the bosun's chair to the stay and lower the boys on the ends of gantlins. They rub the stuff into the wire rope on their way down. It's a preservative, of course, but if you ask me what the recipe is, I shan't tell you, because it's a patent brew made up by yours truly. Patent and potent. And one day, it'll make my fortune, I hope. Meantime, it's good for the soul to watch other chaps working. Ah, that's boat drill again. It happens to us once a week and no nonsense. This trip, it was off Puerto Rico while we were going through the Mona Passage. And no sooner are the boats down than up they have to come again. Then, on top of all that, fire drill. <laughs> Keep us on the hop, don't they? Well, you can't grumble. After all, we carry a dangerous cargo. And in spite of that, our ships are the best bet there is on the insurance market. That's a reputation worth keeping. So, having told you all the news, I'll close. The bosun's gone below, all's well on deck, and tomorrow we'll be back in Curaçao. <laughs> If there's one place every tanker man knows, it's Curaçao. The signal station and the harbour entrance, then acre after acre of the huge refinery spreading like a gigantic spider with a million legs. There's a lake tanker with a cargo of crude from Maracaibo. And now we're moving in past the big pontoon bridge standing open to let us through. We know every fathom of the passage by heart, and the pilot knows it better. to load again and back to Fall River, I suppose. Urgent message, sir. Hello, what's up this time? Western planets are ground. We'll have to find a ship to replace us. Would Patella be any good? Patella, John? We can't spare her. 
Anyway, she'd have to clean tanks. There's Lembulus or Paladina. Paladina? Well, she's about due in Curaçao. But it'll take three days to discharge and load up the cargo we need. What about Liparus? Liparus? Yes, we'd have to replace her on the dollar run. But she's got the right cargo. All right, John. You'll catch her at sea. She ought to be sailing just about now. Master Liparus, now proceed Dublin, discharge bitumen. Thereafter, United Kingdom. Spots peeled yet. Come in. Two cents would pull the freckles off his ugly mug. Master message for you, sir. Proceed Dublin. Thereafter United Kingdom. Confirm bunkers sufficient. So it's home. <laughs> Steer 059 degrees. 059 degrees, sir. The turn for home. The veer of the wind, the swing of the horizon, the arc of foam circling astern. It's now that you remember the promises you made the day your last leave ended, the things you swore to do in the spare time you wouldn't have. The sailor's a split man, half afloat and half ashore. There'll be expectations waiting of a kind that can't go unfulfilled. Better get on with it. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Three, four, five, six. Chronometer, 11 hours, 23 minutes, 14 seconds. Hmm. And the barometer's falling. Oil under your feet and the kick of a laden tanker facing heavy weather. down here, and all the kicks and bumps can't stop the motor pushing the old girl home. Yep, watch those miles roll off astern on the rev counter. Find a ship's position by the use of position lines obtained from two different observations. Comes easy, after 40 years. Eight bells and eight again. Noon to midnight, and the watches change once more. Oh, 
hold infinity in the palm of your hand. Steady as you go. Oil under your feet on deck, and the reek of hot oil in the engine room below. Nothing like it for a queasy stomach. Wind force nine. This is quite a blow. Old Trot has seen another ghost. Course 059 degrees, log 93, wind northwest, force 8. This will blow itself out in 48 hours. Paddy Ballyhooley, or is it Ballyloopy? And that's that. Oh well, one trip's much like another. And Liparus stands for all the tankers, and the men of all the nations who sail them up and down the world. Outbound, homebound, light or laden, carrying their vital cargoes wherever orders take them. The ocean tankers, proud ships all of them. God speed them on their courses and bring them safely home.